Hello, everyone, and welcome, welcome to our Parent Academy class tonight. Welcome to Team Duval. We are thrilled to have you join us this evening. We've got a great team. Uh, we've got School Choice with us. We're going to have communications with us. And of course, the entire Parent Academy team is here to share as much information as we can and answer all the questions you may have this evening. My name is Reagan Copeland. I am Duval County Public Schools Parent Academy Supervisor, and I have my fabulous team with me tonight. Tonight. We've got Ashley and Christina. Yay! Uh, couple things before we get started. First and foremost, as you came in this evening, you noticed that this course is being recorded. We do so with the best of intent. We understand parents are busy, lives are crazy, and the unexpected is always around the corner. So although we had many people sign up this evening, life happens when you hit the back door, and sometimes you're just not able to, to jump on when you thought you could. So we record the class uh, so that those that couldn't make it tonight are able to go back and review the information at a later time. We will take a moment to edit. Uh, this this video and um, or this course and it will be on our website in a couple of weeks where uh, parents can hop on 24 hours a day and uh, check out the information from there it will be housed on our YouTube page if you haven't found that information yet along with our social media accounts where you can get updated all the time about the updating the upcoming courses and free family engagement events those can all be accessed on our um, on our website, duvalschools.org forward slash parent academy. And there we have all kinds of information. We have many course recordings available for you to view uh, similar to this one tonight. Uh, all right, other housekeeping. If you will please remain on mute throughout the course, we'd appreciate it, but we do still wanna hear from you while we present. If you will take the time to write any question that you have along the way in the chat, we will address all questions in the end. Each one of our uh, DCPS members will be here to answer those questions. So do put them there. We want to hear from you and, and answer them directly. Um, we also want your feedback. If you have uh, a moment at the end of the class, we put a, an evaluation uh, for this class in the chat. Take a moment and evaluate us. Give us some feedback. Do you like it? Do you not? What would you like to see next time? Because there definitely will be a next time. Um, I think that's about it if I haven't forgotten anything. Um, otherwise, we'll get our, our show underway here tonight. All right, here we go. Welcome to Team Duval. And what's really cool about this image is every single school in Duval County is listed inside of this image. Uh, so it's one of my favorite. A dear friend made it and uh, it's super special. So there, there's Team Duval. That's our logo. Anytime you see this logo, uh, please know that our uh, district as a whole has put out the information. If you see this logo, um, more than likely the information is accurate. OK, first and foremost, let's talk about the school calendar. Seems like it should be straightforward, but sometimes hurricanes will come our way and kind of shake it all up. Um, I know that this is a very small image. I recognize that. So I did write at the bottom of the slide and it's small. So I will uh, read it out loud, and that is this image. If you haven't already found it yourself, the calendar can be found on our main website, uh, duvalschools.org. It is under the students and families tab found at the top. Our district places all of the quick links, the things that parents would need most on that page. So the duvalschools.org um, and then students and families at the top of the page and underneath that uh, tab, you'll find all kinds of things like testing information and calendars and parent academy. Uh, so a bigger, bigger one is there that you can print for yourselves, download to your own computer. All right, the hot pink is our early release days. We definitely brought those back once a month. Uh, teachers stay at school and learn and train and grow professionally. The students are dismissed about an hour and 15 minutes early. Uh, which means either they will go to extend a day or they will head home on a school bus or they will be heading home on a walking or a bike, but they will be leaving early once a month. And those are highlighted in the pink. Uh, green, no, orange, orange days, weather days. So that is when Mother Nature decides to come ashore and shake things up for us. We do build in days now for that to uh, happen. If no hurricanes happen, knock on wood, if no hurricanes happen, uh, the days are off for students and families. So um, otherwise we'll, we'll come to school, 
but uh, for the sake of no hurricanes, because I'm speaking that into existence, um, the orange days will be off for students and families, uh, assuming there's no hurricanes. Um, schools closed. If you see yellow days, that means no schools are open during that time. For example, spring break. Um, we observe other holidays that are federal holidays, um, the winter break, things like that. Report cards, it will have a little squiggly line on them. Generally speaking, there is a planning day where teachers go and schools are open, but students do not go shortly thereafter. Um, and those are, there's four. There's every nine weeks will be a report card day. And finally, the last day of school, which for us is now going to be a long way away, but this year will fall on June 2nd. A Friday will be the last day of school this year. So that's that one little purple day at the end of the year. Okay, so bus transportation, if you if you have a student who needs bus transportation, this is a biggie. So the district provides bus transportation to students who live one and a half miles or more away from their zoned school, so their neighborhood school. Not a magnet school, not a special transfer option. So if your student goes to a regular neighborhood school, but it's not the one that they are meant to go to. So you are there on special assignment. You have to provide your own transportation. So for everyone else, if you're attending a, a dedicated magnet school or your neighborhood school and you live a mile and a half or more away, then you do receive district transportation with the bus system. Um, you have to register your student for the bus in focus. There's a form under your student's name and it says um, bus, it says transportation request form, I believe is the exact title. Fill that out. It'll take honestly a week to two weeks for that to get processed. Um, once you, it's been fully processed, you can log back into your parent focus account and you will see the bus route, the bus number, all the bus information for your child. Now I will say um, mistakes happen, right? So for example, I registered my son for middle school bus rides over the summer just a few weeks ago before school started, and it came back and it said that he was not eligible to ride the bus. At the very bottom of the transportation form when I went and checked, it said rider eligible, and he it said no next to his name. Well, I triple checked that we were more than a mile and a half away from his own school, and we were. So I called the bus, the transportation office, um, and I just said, hey, is this right? And she said, oh, no, definitely not. She looked up the address. She looked where he went to school. And even though she wasn't able to fix it in focus, she was able to provide me the bus information for him. So I was able to get his morning bus stop, the time, the number, as well as his afternoon bus stop. Um, if you need an alternate address form, so this is if you if your house is eligible for your student to ride the bus, meaning it's a mile and a half away from your school. But you need your student to ride the bus to your office or a, you know, uncle or aunt or somebody else's house in the morning or the afternoon. You would need to fill out an alternate um, address form request. Now that form is not in your focus account. That form is on the transportation website. You have to fill that form out after you've submitted your transportation request. Um, if your student is not eligible to ride from your home, they're not going to be eligible to ride even with an alternate address form, even if that address is eligible. So whatever your address is, it needs to be eligible. Um, I will say, the alternate address form, they say it takes 15 business days for that to process. Um, I filled that out for my son so that he was able to ride the, the bus in the afternoon to my office. Um, I never heard back from them one way or the other if he actually was approved. And so I called and they said, oh, yeah, this is the bus information. The transportation system is just overwhelmed right now. And so it, in my experience, not everybody's, but in my experience, it's taken me following up with them. And it's just, 
they're just overwhelmed with the number of students that are riding the bus and then the lack of employees to help them out right now, which sort of leads us into the next slide. Which is about bus delays. There is a bus driver shortage. Um, and so the district to help parents has created its own web page, which is duvalschools.org forward slash bus delays. Right now, the schools are all in alphabetical order and you can find your school and then they're putting every day if there is a bus that is leaving that school late in the afternoons in particular they're putting that bus number under your school's name so you know if you're wondering if the bus is running late or why isn't my student at the bus stop yet jump on that website and see and again that's duvalschools.org forward slash bus delays if you feel more comfortable emailing, you can email the transportation office at DCPS transportation at duvalschools.org, or you can give them a call at 858-6200. I will say when I called the other day, I called a little after lunchtime, and I think I was on hold for just a couple minutes before somebody, like an actual person, was able to jump on the phone with me and they could answer all of my questions. So I know everybody worries about the wait time, but it was actually really quick when I called them and they were very helpful. So again, you need to register in focus. It's a week to two week wait before that registration goes through. Um, anytime your child is taking a bus in the morning, make sure they're at the bus stop at least 10 minutes early. And then there is a code of conduct that students have to follow for the bus. It is a privilege. It's not a requirement and it can be revoked. So just keep that in mind. All right, next up, we have got an incredible program uh, that Duval County Public Schools has partnered with, Hazel Health. This is um, a free health care uh, benefit to our students, uh, whether they're at school or at home. Ladies and gentlemen, I myself signed up uh, my elementary student for this program. He has a tendency to get headaches. Um, We've done the glasses and all that good stuff, but he has been able to, after I signed up through that um, website right there, uh, I did go ahead and sign him up. He has been able to go to the office several times, get some ibuprofen. They take a look at him, make sure head to toe that everything is fine, and he's able to go back to class and finish the day. It has been such a blessing uh, to participate in this program. Um, it's free. It's easy, you just fill out a form, let the school know, or let Hazel Health, I apologize, let the Hazel Health representatives know what services your child, uh, you approve of them receiving, what you do not want them to receive. A nurse is available on site at your student school, or they will um, sort of Zoom call in a doctor or nurse if they need to. They will always contact you ahead of time to make sure that you are OK with the with proceeding forward and treating your child. Now, if it's something severe, certainly a fever, they would contact you directly and send them on home so that they can be nursed by you. But if it's something like um, a bump, a scrape, a headache, um, maybe a, a painful eye, something that can be treated on site, they are there to serve. And this also is available from home. If you need uh, medical care at home for your student, uh, Hazel Health is there. We do have a, a quick video. I do want to share it uh, from a Hazel Health representative uh, that could give you a little more information about the program. It's only two minutes. Ready? We believe that all children should have access to high quality health care. Here in Duval County Public Schools, that health care is now accessible on campus and at home through Hazel Health. I'm very impressed with the quality of care that the children receive when they have a visit with Hazel Health. It's just like as if they were seeing a provider, except they're on the video iPad as opposed to being in person. Hazel Health is a telehealth service that enables students to see licensed health care providers while at school or in the comfort of their own home. They can be seen for our physical health and mental health, anything from a headache to a stomach ache, pink eye, um, grief, anxiety. So we cover a lot of different things. To begin using these services, parents need to sign up at this website. Here, they'll create an account and also provide consent. Students can visit their school nurse or school health aide, who would then connect the student to a licensed healthcare provider. 
Families also have the option to request and conduct appointments from home. Every time a Hazel Health visit is initiated, the parent or guardian is contacted, so that way they are involved with the visit as well and so that they are aware that that visit's occurring. Through the course of the visit, providers may prescribe medicine. They'll also provide a discharge summary and even send the discharge information to your child's primary care provider with your consent. I think what's also great about Hazel Health is that there's a collaboration with the primary care doctor. So what's really important is that after a child is seen with a Hazel Health visit, a discharge summary is provided to not only the parent, but also to the child's pediatrician. Nicole Delashma is a parent who participated in a visit over the phone. She was very friendly and, um, you know, was did a great job of explaining, you know, what the symptoms were and some things that we could do at home to help um, alleviate some of her uncomfortableness and pain. School staff are hopeful that Hazel Health is the perfect prescription to help remove any barriers to students receiving a high quality education. Well, it ensures that our students who remain in school, if it's not an issue that needs to go directly out to a doctor, we can handle it right here, which avoids them having to leave and lose an instructional time. That's the most important thing is that we get to keep the kids at school, find out what's wrong, what we can do about it, and then they get to continue with the education. Once again, my own uh, son participates in this program and it has been very beneficial, so I'm a fan. And that's our Hazel Health pro, uh, program in all schools throughout Duval County. Um, so now we're going to talk about uh, FOCUS. Um, the FOCUS parent uh, uh, portal provides 24 access to student information. For instance, you can access their grades, their assignments, their state testing results, their school choice application, transportation form, and you can even email the, um, the teachers. Currently, we this is a course that we have. It's called Everything in Focus, and it is currently um, housed on our homepage, which is duvalschools.org slash parent academy under our course recordings. Um, and then we also have this course in English, Spanish, and Arabic on our YouTube page. If by chance you do not have a Focus parent account, um, please sign up. I know that on our course, Everything in Focus, we go step by step um, of how to create an account and all of the amazing features that this um, this account has. Hi, good evening, all. Um, my name is Lorraine Ricks. I work in the um, the communications department with the school district, and I'm I'm so glad that focus was the um, the previous slide. It's a perfect segue into really what is the my most important point uh, this evening is that in order to create a focus account or to access focus, you need to create a parent guardian account. Um, for our purposes, let's call this a parent one view account. Um, this is very important and it's new this year because if, when you create a parent one view account and link to your child, it will allow you to access what is one of the most important communication tools that our team uses and school uses to communicate with families. And that is our automated um, mass communication system. This is where we can send out instantaneously um, automated phone calls, emails, um, text, and um, app notifications. Now, this may not seem so great to you if you're receiving a phone call um, on Sunday evening when you're just trying to enjoy your, your reality show in peace. But this really truly is one of the most important ways that that the district and the schools communicate with our families is through this automated um, math system. Excuse me. And so um, we communicate everything from uh, daily attendance to if there is an emergency at the school, like a lockdown, for example. That's how your school and or the district is going to communicate with you. Also school closures, one of the ways that we're going to, to communicate with you that maybe schools are closed for several days due to um, uh, pending dangerous weather is through our automated calls, emails, app notification, which, um, and I, I'll, I'll say this again, because um, this is new this year, you will only receive these calls if you have a parent one view account and you are linked to your child. Now, how do you get this account? Many of you may already have it. 
Um, I actually, after my presentation, I'm going to um, add the link to um, the chat box, but it's www.duvalschools.org slash focus. That is a step-by-step -step guide for how to create a parent um, OneView account and link to your child. The other thing that, that I want to share with you is that maybe you have a parent OneView account um, and you are linked to your child, but you want to check and see if the, um, the contact information is, is up to date. Another thing that is new this year is that families are able to update their information in one view, and I'll, I'll include that link in the, um, the chat box. I think that is the most important thing that I have for you. I have, there's visitteamduval.org and our social media handles. We put that there just because there is a lot of good news and good information that we share on our platform that we want to make sure our families have access to. So teamduval.org You'll see a wealth of stories. There are feature stories about just amazing learning and teaching going on in the classrooms. And there's also very informative um, stories as well. That's also where we'll post information um, such as uh, like if there is a school closure, for example. So teamduval.org and then also on our social media, we have Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Talk with Team Duval. If you go to our um, main web page, this is a lot of websites that I'm giving you. Um, but if you go to our main webpage, you'll see, uh, which is www.duvalschools.org, you'll see the Team Duval feature. That basically um, allows you, if you have any type of question or concern, someone on our team, when you use that um, portal, someone on our team receives that communication that you send and will help connect you or route you to the right person who can answer that question for you. So I know I went kind of fast, um, but again, I will include this information in the, the chat box. And I think I just want to leave with make sure that you, you have a parent one view account and you, you link to your child that will allow you to access um, parent communication or the mass communication system that we use. Thank you. All righty, thank you. Um, so now we're gonna talk um, a little bit about elementary testing that um, happens uh, during August and September. For kindergartners, we have the Flickers testing, which is a computer-based test that is given to all kindergarten students within the first 30 days of school. There is also Waterford reading and math, um, which we are actually going to hopefully having be having a little info session about in um, in the upcoming months. Um, there's also computer adaptive testing slash programs such as Freckle, which is K through five, STAR, which is third through fifth, um, and then various reading and math lessons um, and assessments throughout the year. Now the older elementary students um, are gonna have achieved 3000, which is again, a computer-based test assessment used to determine um, their reading and their Lexile uh, levels. Um, it actually goes um, from third through 12th, but for the purposes of this slide, um, it's third through fifth. And then we have our baseline assessments and the subjects are assessed um, and they vary by different grade levels. Each school determines their own testing schedule. I know some schools have started testing baseline testing this week already. Um, you can always visit the testing website, which is dcps.doallschools.org slash testing to get more information about um, the testing schedules. All right, and for our secondary parents, I am also one of those. Um, we have similar testing in our secondary schools as we do elementary, and then it takes uh, a very large turn. So the Achieve 3000, if you're a secondary parent, you've heard about this program for quite some time. This is a, a kind of a level set. Uh, students will take and achieve a 3000 assessment uh, at least three times per year to see their growth, see how um, their comprehension is progressing throughout the year. Uh, all students, 6th through 12th, should be taking this um, 
within the next two to three weeks if they haven't, like Christina said, if they haven't already uh, started. Baseline assessments for uh, all students, every single class they're in, they'll need to take a baseline assessment. And this is to show where they are performing when they walk in the door versus where they are performing uh, on grade level when they leave uh, that class and that class could end at the end of a semester or it could leave. It could end at the end of the year. So these baseline assessments do happen beginning of the year. So this month uh, they will have there will be another baseline assessment and I mean it could be from PE weightlifting to biology. So everywhere in between they are going to take these assessments. Um, and then again, finally, at, at the end of the year, if there's not um, a standardized test or an end of course exam associated with it. Um, next up, the new stuff, the best, B-E-S-T, uh, best assessments. Um, oh, the acronym I had spelled out earlier. Um, benchmarks for evaluating student thinking is I believe what it is, but these are our new Florida standards and we are assessing them uh, through the Algebra 1. Uh, end of course exams, so specifically our high schoolers or in some eighth graders, um, and then our geometry EOCs. And these are end of course exams that all students must pack, pass. These are also uh, graduation requirements. They are essential. Um, the fast progress monitoring, exactly what they say, progress monitoring uh, throughout the year. These are formative assessment students will take them uh, regularly throughout the year. They also are replacing our FSA. So as you may have heard the governor speak to that last year was the last year for FSA. Uh, this year is coming our progress monitoring and those are called the fast uh, progressive monitoring. Florida assessment of student thinking is what the acronym stands for. And those I believe will be three times per year specifically in reading and math. We need to make sure our students do take those assessments seriously. Um, the HMH growth monitoring, this is um, online uh, assessment. S uh, teachers use this data to determine small groups, to determine which students need help in this area, which students need help in that area, which students are thriving in specific uh, strands or, or, or standards. Uh, this is really a, a, an assessment of students along the way for the day to day instruction the day to day learning to make sure that the students are getting enrichment where they need it and support where they need it. And finally, the retakes that says FSA and it shouldn't I should have fixed that on the slide, but the if they if they didn't pass the FSA last year, they'll need to specifically a 10th grader. Um, they will need to pass an assessment this year if they need to retake any ACE testing, which is specialized program um, for high performing students in high school. They will need to retake that this year. Students are given a second chance um, at passing and of course exams the following year as well. Anything that is a graduation requirements. We are making sure that our students are giving every opportunity to pass them so that they can go on and succeed later in life. As Christina mentioned on the other slide, uh, we do have a, a specific uh, site, a web page uh, devoted specifically to all testing, and it takes you from August all the way through May and shows you when uh, the month is that your student will be expected to take that assessment. Every school has their own schedule, but there's a window of time that that test will occur. So it may be for one school on a Tuesday and the next school on a Wednesday, but within that window, the assessments will occur. And attendance. I know you are here, so I know that you're all engaged parents, and I'm sure you're aware that attendance is a priority in order for consistent academic and social growth to happen over the course of a year. Um, if you know your student will be out ahead of time, please email the teacher or the CRT at your child's secondary level school just to let them know that the absence is coming. Um, a lot of teachers are posting assignments on Teams now so that if your student is absent, they can just pop onto Teams, see what they missed, and get a head start on catching up on their work before they get back to class. Um, when students return for, to school from an absence, if it's a short absence, one, two, three days, they will need a written excuse from their parent in order to excuse the absence if the reason they were absent is one of the excused um, 
allowances. So illness, injury, a death in the family, inclement weather, hurricanes. If you are without power due to a hurricane or a tropical storm that comes through, you're not going to be penalized for missing a day of school when you didn't have power. Um, religious holidays. And then if the bus is late or if the bus just doesn't show up, and your child is either late or misses a day of school because the bus didn't show up, they will not be penalized for that either. Um, a doctor's note is needed if your child is absent for three consecutive days or more. Uh, I know COVID is still a thing, colds are coming back, the flu is starting to kick back up again already somehow. So if your child is out for three or more days, they will need a doctor's note. Um, same thing if your child is returning to school after having been in the hospital, they'll need a doctor's note clearing them to come back to school. So just keep all of those things in mind. Um, also a written note, don't put it in a planner. If you have an elementary student, I know a lot of them, the communication is just writing notes in the planner back and forth with the teacher, but please put it on a separate piece of paper that the teacher can keep and file away in your student's file or send them an email. That way they can print it out or just keep it electronically for as long as the records are required. Good evening, my name is Jennifer Marcellus. I am a representative from the Office of School Choice. It is wonderful to be here today with everyone. Um, some brief points for the upcoming year. So Florida and Duval County are both um, a choice state and a choice district. So we do offer parents the opportunity to make a choice. However, the choice and the placement cannot be guaranteed due to um, the limitations of our schools of seat availability. So we're gonna talk in a little while about the lottery, but that'll come into play in a minute. Some vocabulary that you may not be familiar with, and that's gonna be really important for your child's academic career. One is an attendance area school. So every school in Duval County is zoned, every home in Duval County is zoned for a school, and that is your attendance area school. As was mentioned, transportation is provided if you're more than 1.5 miles from that school. And um, enrollment is automated as soon as you create a student ID number, again, through one view and focus. Magnet schools, our magnet schools give students the opportunity to really dive deep into one academic program or area of interest. These schools do have a course or program continuity that goes from elementary, middle to high school. However, don't be worried. If your child decides at the end of elementary school that they would like to participate in something else, you can make a different choice for those middle school years. And this is just an interest for students. It's an interest area. Um, our special transfer option schools are all of our traditional neighborhood schools who may have seat availability and any high schools or middle schools that don't have um, don't have magnet programs. Some of our high schools like Robert E. Lee, it has a magnet program, but it is so small that we offer special transfer option seats at Lee if there is seat availability. And that's just one example of a high school that has magnet seats, neighborhood seats, as well as special transfer option seats. Um, as we go through, so the charter schools and the Duval Virtual um, Instructional Academy, those that information can be found on our website. Those are programs that are not managed by our department. However, you can find additional information on our website about those programs. So student placement did end for the 2022-2023 um, school year. It ended um, yesterday, the, um, um, August 22nd. And so we're moving forward with the next school year. Um, we are reaching out to parents if and when there's seat availability. One thing that was mentioned prior to is the focus accounts and the OneView accounts. It is extremely important that parents have access to those resources, because that is how moving forward, if you decide to make an alternate choice for your school, you will do that through your parent focus account. Um, 
That window opens, as the slide says, on January 1st. It is never too early to be considering your options for the 2023-2024 school year. As um, the application open window opens January 1st, and it's important to remember that families have access to the most seat availab availability during the on-time application window. I will post additional um, information in the chat about contacting us because unfortunately some of the information on the slide is outdated. We, um, the, I'll post a new phone number on the, on the chat to reach out to us. And it is always best if you can wait 24 hours to reach out to us via email. Um, as specialists, we do monitor that method of communication. However, you can call us at uh, 904-390-2999, and we will return your phone call in a timely manner if we receive it after business hours. Thank you so much. All righty, so let's talk about some free breakfast and lunch. So all students, yes, you heard me, all students will receive free breakfast and lunch for the 2022-2023 school year. Um, you can find the menus at duvelschools.nutrislice.com slash menu. Menus can also be found on your school's website or on the DCPS app. Now we have a cool new program called myschoolbucks.com. You can um, go to that website or download the app and you can actually deposit money into your student's account in case they wanna get some lunch, some snacks, some, I'm um, um, sorry, not lunch, it's free. Um, some snacks or some extra goodies um, to go with their lunch, uh, you can go ahead and you can deposit money um, into that account for them. All right, one of the most important topics, of course, is student safety. Um, I want you to know our district is doing everything that they can to help keep our students, our teachers, and our staff members as safe as possible. Um, we have actually partnered with Chief Burton. Uh, it's the last bullet, but I do want to bring it up first because it is very important. We offered uh, a school safety event with Chief Burton a couple weeks ago at Atlantic Coast. It's open to the entire city. Um, well over 300 parents register. We'd love to have you, if you weren't able to attend that one, join us at our next one, which will be uh, confirmed today at Westside High School. And we do go to the high schools because they have a large auditorium to house all of the families. Bring your students if you want to, of course. It will begin at 6.30. That is hot off the press information. Again, we'd love to have you. It's a thorough explanation of all things that uh, are covered in our schools throughout the county. Uh, the Recently, we passed the half cent sales tax uh, through a referendum here in Jacksonville. That money is going directly to uh, retrofitting many of our schools, well, all of our schools with um, cameras everywhere. Uh, fences, updated uh, locks, updated doors, updated film on windows so that it's one way. Uh, we're doing what we can while we are also in the process of rebuilding schools to ensure that they are uh, as protected as humanly possible. Um, each school does have a safety plan and an emergency response team that meets monthly to ensure that everything is happening as it should be. All principals and admin teams have um, an app on their phone that they open up and silently can press from anywhere in the building a button, a specific button that will alert all JSO officers at a moment's notice um, without a word being said. So in, a, in an extreme situation, uh, everyone would be notified immediately. And he did uh, model that example and it did work. Uh, classroom doors are always to be locked at all times from the outside. Should you visit a school and you are able to walk right in, please notify someone. Please speak up. We need to make sure our doors are locked at all times and they are told to, but sometimes um, students will leave a door, but sometimes people just forget. We'll leave it there, but we need to make sure someone's alerted, notified so that it can be rectified. Uh, we do have highly trained school police officers as well as a partnership with Jackson Sheriff's Office, and we have individuals in the school who are our safety agents uh, roaming the building at all times. Um, as I said before, we have camera surveillance um, in every school. Uh, our high schools are, are definitely saturated with cameras at every turn, um, 100 at one school. So eyes are on the school, on the campus. Um, 
our students, just like we did back in the day, of course they do the fire drills, but in addition to that, they do lockdown drills. They do um, red alert drills. They are prepared and, and you hate to do it, but you want them to be ready just in case. So we do make sure our students are prepared. They know what to do in an emergency situation like a fire drill or a um, tornado drill or unfortunately a lockdown drill. So rest assured, our kids are protected the best we can. If you'd like to know more about this, if you have questions and you'd like to ask the chief directly, I encourage you to register and sign up for the West Side High School um, School Safety event. The registration has not opened yet because we just confirmed it today, but you will be able to find that registration link on our website, duvalschools.org forward slash parent academy will be there probably next week, and we would love to have all of you in attendance. And to add a little bit to what Reagan said, I have included and I've pinned to the top of the chat um, um, Parent Academy's website, Parent Academy's YouTube page, and also our course recordings page and our email address. So if you want to reach out to us or look at up any of these resources, you can go ahead and go there as well. So now, now let's talk a little bit about the PTA, PTSA, and volunteers. So the overall purpose of the PTA's, uh, PTSA is to make every child's uh, potential a reality by engaging and empowering families and communities to advocate, ooh, excuse me, advocate for all children. Um, if you would like to join the PTA, you can always uh, contact the school. Um, there usually is a PTA representative there. Uh, fees vary depending on the school uh, between five to $10. Um, so you can go ahead and contact your school for more information on that. Now, if you'd like to be a volunteer, you can visit duvalschools.org slash volunteer in order to um, get your application. Um, there is a background check and a few an application form for you to fill out. Um, being a volunteer is extreme is an extremely important part of the success of Duval County Public Schools. It could be helping out teachers on a field trip or oh my goodness, when I used to I used to have parent volunteers who would even come and cut out um, the what's it called the lamination papers um that was an amazing help or help out during class parties or um even if they can't you can't be there in person you can also uh, volunteer virtually um whether it's being a guest uh, speaker a guest reader um and helping out with other duties at the school volunteers are extremely needed and necessary in school especially in the light of the teacher shortage that's going on right now so if you have not done so yet, go ahead and fill out your volunteer application. All right, and as we come to an end here of our of our course, I, I do want to let you know if you were interested in the information shared tonight, um, and we're not done yet, but I did want to, to touch on some upcoming courses we have in the next couple of weeks because we're trying to front load our uh, Parent Academy program right now with information we feel is absolutely urgent to parents as soon as possible. Uh, we have the following courses. I won't read them to you each and every one, but I can recommend uh, certainly as Christina was just talking about the volunteer course, we have that class available this Thursday, this Thursday evening. So if you need to know more information about the um, volunteer process, how to get started, um, where to go, that is definitely being presented this Thursday by our department and uh, we're touching on courses uh, about mental health and our students and the, the anxiety out there the um, the mental health support that we provide as a school district to our kids is invaluable and we will be reviewing all of that in the it's okay to not be okay course coming up September 6th um, supporting reading at home and if you're battling struggling um, working through behavior issues at home, especially in the summertime, it gets uh, out of routine and things get a little bit wonky at home. We are going to be addressing behavior uh, tips and, and strategies and, and tricks to do at home uh, on September 20th in that course. Several others, many, many more, I think 65 courses this fall. So join us. We would love to have you at any and all of them. Uh, we do bring the experts. We bring the, the heads of the departments to you so that you can engage with them. Uh, and speaking of that, we will definitely address any questions at the end. So if you have them, put them in the chat now. OK, and we are on social media. We are on, I won't say every social media platform, but we are on sort of the three biggies for if you count 
YouTube. So we are on Twitter. You can find us at, at Parent Acad DCPS. We're on Facebook at Parent Academy Duval. Our Instagram is Parent Academy Duval. Our YouTube channel is Parent Academy um, hyphen Duval County Public Schools. And you can always email us at parentacademy at duvalschools.org. The question doesn't have to be about tonight's course. It can be about absolutely anything. And if we don't have the answer, we can absolutely get you in touch with someone who has the answer for you. So please don't ever hesitate to reach out. We want to be the go between. We want to help you reach the right people in the district. So if you have any questions, um, type them in the chat. We can answer them or feel free to come off mute. What is the one view used for? I've only ever used focus. I know okay. that with one view, you have the ability to update your personal contact information yeah. in one view versus you cannot do that in focus. Through one view, you can enroll a new student um, if you already have your focus account, your parent focus account, you also already have a OneView account. It's the exact same login. It's yes. just a different website. It also it, lets you see what like technology devices have been assigned to your student because in middle and high school, you know, each student has a laptop assigned to them. Right. If if you have the focus, you've got the one view. It's a different um, a couple of different accessories, a couple of different um, features on the one view. Um, I go straight to focus on the daily, but I do. I'm loving the mm -hmm. fact that we can now go through one view and updates. If your cell phone number changed, your address changed, you can update that yourself through that entry into mm -hmm. the focus account yeah. um, instead of going through the schools to update that, which is just faster, a time yeah. saver. Um, and focus, I think, will always it tends to update faster than the one view. There's it used to be the other way around, and now it seems like it's flip flopped. So I always go to focus. All right, I see a question. IEP, IEP from Miss Jackson or someone with the name. Mm -hmm. And I just yeah. said the IEP is the individualized education plan, which is what some of our students with special needs have in order to help them be successful in the classroom. And I also included the link to register for that course on September oh. 1st in the chat as well. Fabulous course. If you have a student it with is. an IEP, if you have a student that you think needs an IEP, if you have a student that you think uh, has an IEP but needs some edits to it, I can't strongly suggest this course enough. This is an experienced parent. She's a Parent Academy parent leader. She's a parent to Lee graduate. She is a parent of uh, a high schooler now, but has been all the way through. She has advocated for countless students and advocated um, on behalf of, of parents as well. So she will be uh, on that evening presenting her journey, her recommendations, her um, struggle, and, and giving you all the information. She's wonderful, will we'll answer every question you could possibly have and has probably been there and done that. So it, again, if you have a student or you know of a family with a student that has some questions, I encourage you to share that course with them. Mommy Me and my IEP is the course. Is there anything else? All right, we don't want to waste your time. We just wanted to make sure we were here and ready if you needed us or if you wanted to ask a question. Um, as I ramble on these last 20 words, this is my my delay strategy for for staying on just in case you were nervous. And worst case, you can always email us if Absolutely. you think of something after the course. Absolutely. Uh, definitely a special thanks to our school choice representative, uh, Jennifer Marcellus, and our communications representative, Laureen Ricks. We appreciate both of you for being on tonight to help answer uh, questions from our families among Duval County. So I, I can't thank you enough for joining us, for sticking with us through the entire class. If uh, if you want to recommend this class to other families, the recording will be available in the next uh, week or two, and it will be found on our homepage under the course recordings button, uh, along with many other courses. So we will see you next time at the next Parent Academy class, whether it's at Mommy, Me, and My IEP, or It's Okay to Not Be Okay, or whatever strikes your interest. We will see you there. Thank you so much for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Good night.